I want to make a video on a ro uh, rotor phasing or phasing your rotor or generally this is whenever you run a crank trigger that this becomes an issue but this can actually apply to anything with a uh, distributor in it and it's something that's commonly overlooked and can actually cause problems and it's confusing if you don't quite understand what's going on and I just wanted to try to explain it the best I can and possibly help somebody out but um, I'm going to basically break down, I've got a junk distributor here, and basically what you got is you got the, your distributor shaft is made into two pieces, and there's the bottom half, and then the top half, and this is where your mechanical advance, the reason that those two different pieces is so the mechanical advance can physically advance the uh, rotor to advance timing based off engine speed. And I, I actually, like I said, confused myself trying to think about this, but from what I can figure out in my head, uh, mechanical advance does not affect rotor phasing because your, what is actually triggering your spark is your reluctor wheel. And the rotor is locked to the reluctor wheel, which means whatever the reluctor wheel changes, the rotor changes with it. So I don't think that can affect rotor phasing. However, um, vacuum advance can because it is moving, which the can's not on here, and this plate's froze up. But it's, your vacuum advance moves your, uh, your magnetic pickup. And that is physically moving the relationship between the rotor and the terminal of the spark plug. Whereas, Mechanical advance is just changing the relationship between the crankshaft, which is locked to the distributor gear, and the rotor. But the rotor is not changing its relationship in contact, in relationship to the, uh, the, the terminal for the spark plug. So a lot of people tend to think that when your rotor comes by the spark plug, that it fires whenever it comes by it. And it does, but it's the rotor itself is dumb. It doesn't know when to fire. That is determined when the uh, reluctor wheel passes the pickup. And this is basically just, and this, this all applies to points also, but this is just an electronic version of points. And whenever the reluctor comes around to the pickup, it's like the points opening. And when the points open, it collapses the field on the coil and the coil fires. The coil doesn't know where the engine's at, what's going on. All it knows is that the field collapses and it fires. The rotor doesn't know what it's doing. All it's doing is transferring spark from the coil to the plug terminal. So, the brains are right here. And the relationship of where these two meet in relation to where this is at when it is triggered and fires is what is is what is your rotor phasing um and and what 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 this gets at is this thing can spark from here it can spark here you know back to this terminal it can spark anywhere in there ideally you want to be on the terminal when it sparks but it can spark anywhere and the problem with that is that especially when you get to controlling timing with your ignition box instead of using mechanical advance, this thing can be out in no man's land when you start putting advance in it and it can actually be far enough to where it finds it easier to jump to this terminal instead of to that terminal. So that's where you want to correct your distributor. And this mostly applies to crank triggers. But if a guy wanted to get serious and correct a a stock type distributor could be done by moving the advance plate. But the whole idea of rotor phasing is to get your rotor on the terminal whenever it sparks. That's the safest, and you don't have to worry about crossfire. And actually, I broke a couple flywheels using start retard on one of my old um, ignition boxes, and I think down the road I figured out that I think what was happening is 
the distributor was far enough out of phase with the ignition retard in the box that I think it was cross-firing and that that possibly could have been corrected. I could have possibly phased the distributor for it, but the stock distributor, it didn't matter. It worked. It was locked out as welded. I just quit using, um, quit pulling timing whenever I started it. But uh, on a crank trigger, the crank trigger itself is doing the job of, uh, is doing the job of the reluctor wheel. And it's locked to the crankshaft. And then at that point, the rotor again is doing nothing. Actually, the entire distributor is doing nothing but transferring spark from the coil to the uh, spark plug terminal. So your job now, since you've taken the distributor out of the equation, it's, it's literally just there for the purpose of spinning this rotor and distributing spark. But there's no timing going on in it. It's not... The ignition box is not using it as a reference to where, what the engine's doing. Um, it is just strictly there to transfer spark. So what you need to do is correctly orient the rotor to the spark plug terminal. And you do that by drawing a hole in a, in a uh, cap. And you start the car and you adjust the... Uh, you adjust the distributor until you, you put a timing light on it and shine the timing light at the hole and you'll see the, the rotor coming by and you adjust it until the spark is in the center of the terminal. If you're using a lot of um, high-end retard or something like that, then you can cheat it and possibly lead, you know, try to use the trailing edge during normal and then as the retard comes in or advance, whichever way it's going. Um, you're, you're keeping your rotor out of no man's land over here where you don't have a chance of crossfire, which is even more important on, you know, high speed, high load situation, like with nitrous or something like that. And you've got a lot of timing pulled. You don't want to jump into the other terminal because that's going to, it's going to go boom. But they do sell some two piece rotors that allow you to adjust the phasing, but you run the risk of the screw coming loose or something like that. And again, you get out in a no man's land you're going to be in trouble. So basically I uh, just trying to get, get the point across of what's going on and the misconception that a lot of people think that this triggers whenever it goes by there and it doesn't. I mean, it's supposed to, it triggers whenever the pickup tells it to trigger. And that doesn't matter whether it's a magnetic pickup points, um, a crank trigger, whatever, but you start to get into trouble when you start lying to it with your box and it thinks it's here and you tell it to spark over here, then that's when you start to get into trouble. The, uh, and on a stock distributor, the only way I, I see that you could physically correct it would be to get rid of the vacuum advance and figure out a way to move the reluctor wheel and then lock it down and take that out of the equation. But that would allow you to correct rotor phasing. But like I said, the way I understand it, I don't think Mechanical advance will affect your rotor phasing, but controlling timing with a box or vacuum advance will. So I think I covered everything. Uh, I just hope I got the basic concept of what rotor phasing is across and that it is very important. And like I said, it becomes more important when you start using uh, an ignition box to control your timing. So. Hopefully this helps somebody out.